This week, we got a brand new handheld reveal, a PlayStation price increase, and more. So let's just go ahead, together, as a people, and take it out! And welcome to another sensational Sunday. I'm Mike, and I'm back with the gaming news. And you know what system has been making the news this week? the PlayStation and specifically PlayStation Plus. For the most part, the annual subscription price hasn't changed much. I know they introduced the tiered system a while ago and they renamed the basic PlayStation Plus to Essential, but it still was $60 a year. Well, that is changing as Sony has officially announced that all of the annual pricing for the PlayStation Plus tiers are increasing. So the Essential tier is going from $60 a year to $80 a year. Extra is going from 100 to 135, and premium is going from 120 to 160. Now the monthly and quarterly subscription prices aren't changing because they're already more expensive than paying for an annual subscription anyway, even after the price increases. Now these increases won't start until September 6th for new members and November 6th for existing members. The only catch is if you switch tiers after September 6th as an existing member, then it'll be based on the new pricing. We also recently saw some increases with Xbox Game Pass pricing, and both Microsoft and Sony increased their console prices in several regions, so unfortunately this isn't out of the norm for either company at this point. In my opinion, the biggest hit is the essential tiers since you basically need it for online play on the PlayStation 4 or 5, so going from 60 to 80 is kind of a big increase. I mean, I would say the same about the extra and premium tiers, but... They kind of trash with what you get anyway. All right, moving on to something new. Microsoft has finally launched the new Xbox Series S. This had been announced a while ago, but it has now officially released. So right now it's only available in carbon black, but of course the big difference is it has one terabyte of storage instead of the 512 gigs, and it retails for $350. So basically a $50 price increase for double the storage, which makes sense. If it's like the 512 gig version, they'll probably have some good discounts in the future. I think the only issue that I see with the pricing is it does get close to the digital PS5, which is a more powerful system and has almost the same amount of storage as the one terabyte Series S. So I really think over time that this will be like the other version of the Series S and be on sale a lot and include bundled games. I'm also curious to see if they'll release a different color variant or they'll just stick to the black for this version of the system. Overall, I think it's a better option than the base model with only 512 gigs of storage, especially if they have some good sales on this in the future. Speaking of the not so distant future, we finally have the official release date for Sony's upcoming handheld, the PlayStation Portal. So I talked about it in last week's video, but the PlayStation Portal is Sony's upcoming remote play only handheld that's gonna be launching soon at $200. And this week, Sony has given the official release date and is now up for pre-order through Sony Direct. So the PlayStation Portal will be launching on November 15th, so they're basically squeezing the name right before holiday season. And there was also one thing that I missed about the Portal when covering the story last week. So let's talk about that really quick. So while the Portal does remote play from a PS5, it cannot play any streaming titles, which is a little weird. I didn't even think about it because I never really messed with streaming that much when I had a PS5. But yeah, having a streaming only handheld that can't play games from their cloud library is a strange omission. I know the portal doesn't run anything natively, but I feel that they could have found a way for it to stream those games natively, especially because that's the only way to play PS3 games on a PS5. Either way, I don't think it changes much about the device. You can still remote play most games on the PS5 as long as they're download it locally and they're not streaming only, but let me know if you're planning to pick one up when it launches in November. And while we're on the topic of handhelds, Sony isn't the only one that's coming out with a new one soon, and that's what we're talking about today in our final story. So a couple of weeks ago, I covered Lenovo's leaked handheld, the Legion Go. Well, this week, Lenovo made it official and pretty much everything that was in the leak is true. The leak was pretty much just the design, like the system itself, along with some optional AR glasses. So we've already seen that before, that's spot on from the leaks. But now we get more details on the specs and the capabilities of the controllers. So the Legion Go is gonna have an 8.8 inch screen that runs at QHD resolution at 144 hertz. It's running the AMD Z1 Extreme, which is the same processor as the high-end version of the ROG Ally. It has 16 gigs of RAM. It has those detachable controllers, which use Hall Effect sensors for the thumbsticks, which I prefer since they are less likely to suffer from stick drift over time. It's gonna run Windows 11 and is launching next month at $699. So it's gonna have three options for storage, 256 gig, 512, and one terabyte. And it's also gonna have a micro SD card slot. So I'm guessing the 699 version will be the 256 gig version, which will put it right at the same price as the ROG Ally, which does have more storage at the same price with 512 gigs, but it has a smaller screen that runs at 1080p, 120 hertz. 
I was surprised by the price. I was definitely expecting this to be over a thousand, but like Asus, I guess they want to be competitive with the Steam Deck pricing wise. Also, I wasn't expecting it to be announced and then released next month. But the main thing I had questions about were those detachable controllers when I first saw them. I mentioned in the leak video that there was no point in them being detachable if it wasn't for a specific reason. Well, they actually have a unique use for it, but first I'll cover the basics of the controllers. So a lot like other gaming handhelds, it's gonna have programmable buttons, triggers, and grips. There's a touchpad on the right controller that you can obviously use as a mouse pad, and it's gonna have a scroll wheel, which will be useful in Windows and in certain games. But the main gimmick with these controllers is you can detach them, and you can take the right controller and set it on a magnetic base, and it has an optical sensor built into the bottom, so it basically functions as a vertical mouse. I think it's an interesting gimmick, but I don't know how practical it'd be for a handheld since you have to prop it up with a kickstand, and have a stable surface for both the console and the controller while using it as a mouse, but it's still a cool option to have. I would have liked to see an included holder to turn it into a single standalone wireless controller like you can with the Switch, but it's always possible that they'll add that down the line. They are also releasing those optional AR glasses that we saw in the leaked pictures a few weeks ago. Dave2D also has a great hands-on video with it if you want to see it in action. I'll link that in the description under the references section if you want to go check that out. Now personally, I'm not getting one of these because I have too many handheld PCs right now, but if the build quality is good, especially with those detachable controllers, I can see this being a great device for a lot of people. And I can also see the end of this video, so I'm bringing it to a close. But let me know what you think in the comments about the Legion Go. Is this a device that you'd be interested in getting? And if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to tell a friend, tell a coworker, like, share, and subscribe, and hit that bell notification to be notified when I drop a video or a live stream. And I always release two things at the same time.